Welcome to the Golf Smarter Podcast, Kelly. Hi, Fred. Glad to be here. Glad to have you. This is going to be you. fun. I, we kind of snuck around and talked a couple times ahead of this, and I'm really excited to get you on the show. Uh, you've got a great long history in golf with people we, we know. We have mutual friends, Terry Kaler being one of them. Right. Uh, but uh, let's talk about, today we're going to talk about the golf course that you currently work at, Wolf Dancer mm -hmm. in Austin, Texas. Right. We're also going to talk about the pace of play, which has been rated very high by your customers, right. which is a very nice thing it is to be nice. talked about. I found it in an article recently. And then we also want to talk about you have the new Harvey Pennick Golf Academy. Yes, very excited about that. And we'll talk about Absolutely. that as well. Great. Where so do you want let's to start. <laughs> Let's start with you, my friend. Okay. Um, how, you are the director of golf and head of golf instruction for Wolf Dancer? I am, yes. I've been here uh, six years now. Uh, I was here for three years, left for three years, and then had the great opportunity. You know, who says you can ever get to go back? So I got to come back in January 2013, and I was thrilled to be offered the position uh, when we first opened. I was here prior to Wolf Dancer and High Lost Pines being open in June of 2006. I was able to, uh, you know, be the head pro at that time and did a lot more teaching then than I do now. And we'll get into that with the Harvey Pinnock Academy. But uh, so thrilled to be back here. I really felt there's a lot of things that I wanted to get done operationally, sales and marketing, my background as well in the golf industry uh, that I couldn't wait to get back here and just pray that, you know, just like West Coast, to East Coast in 2015, that we get some stable weather. I mean, it was just crazy here, like everybody, everywhere else last year. Yeah. What were the issues that you were having? What kind of bad weather were you having? I, I comment on calling it Old Testament weather to where we had flooding in the spring, drought in the summer, and then more flooding uh, in the fall. So it was we had over 70 inches of rain at our property. And it was really challenging, and it was really hard for everybody in Austin area to remember a Saturday when it wasn't raining. So, and, you know, Saturday is our big day for golf around here, of course, for everybody to play. So, you know, we did have some catch-up in rounds. It, it really hurt us badly in the spring. But we did catch up because, you know, your regular golfer is always going to find the time to play. So, you know, if he got washed out in the spring, he'll make it up in the summer. And then in the fall. So that happened. But it was a crazy year last year for weather. Yes. And unfortunately, it seems like it's going to continue to be unpredictable at best. It is. Like this February, this may be the best February we've ever had. You know, it's been 65 to 80s every day. It's been cooler in the morning, but we have not, you know, we've probably had only a handful of frost delays. That's so unheard of for us. And we haven't had any closed days at all for January and February. January and February we typically have three to four days per month where we're not even open because it's too cold. And we haven't had any of that. It's been pretty incredible. So I'm kind of thrown off just looking outside today that it really is February because it feels like <laughs> April or May. It's, it's incredible. So uh, you're in Austin, Texas. What is so different about Austin than the rest of Texas? Because when you talk about Dallas or Houston, you're talking flat, big sky, uh, right. High humidity, especially Houston, high humidity. Mm -hmm. um, Austin seems to be not only geographically and politically <laughs> and thought wise, right. um, emotionally, a very different place than the rest of Texas. What? Let's keep it on golf, I guess. But right, sure. Uh, what? It, what? What makes Austin special? Well, I think it's, uh, and it speaks to our property as well, all of Austin, the you know, the topography changes because you're coming into the hill country. So, you know, compared to mountains, you know, Rocky Mountains or the Appalachians, we don't have mountains, but it's hillsides, but it's, it's beautiful. It's not, yeah, Houston can be very flat. There's a lot of great golf courses there, but here, like what Arthur Hill, Hills did when he designed our golf course, he really didn't have to move a lot of dirt. There's so much mm -hmm. interesting change in terrain uh, in the whole Austin area, and it speaks for us as well. And, you know, Austin's the capital of Texas, capital live music. And, you know, the temperatures typically year-round. Now, allergies aren't the greatest here year-round, but, you know, the weather's really good. And there's uh -huh. so many people moving here every day. It's becoming, uh, you know, the Silicon Valley Junior, 
so to speak. I mean, Google's here. There's so many other companies that are moving here in technology. Hey, Google's so, everywhere. Oh, I know. Yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and it's the home of Michael Dell, but there's so many other companies that are moving here. And it's great to see. And I, what I love about that is all the tech guys that play golf. They love it. They're, they're fanatical about it. And we just love having them in the Austin area. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I think of Austin as a college town. I don't think of it as the capital. Right. Yeah, it's both. There's there's a small university here, University of Texas. Yes, yeah, small. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How, how many people they get out for football games on on uh, Saturday? Oh, quite afternoons? a few. It's they're close to probably a hundred thousand. I think the stadium is. It's yeah. It's it. They're rabid, and you know, with no, we don't have any professional sports in Austin, so that right. they are the professional sports, so to speak, and baseball as well. So it's uh, it's oh, really? a great college. Well, team Texas town. is a football state. Right. Right? Yes, it is. And yeah. you probably see, I don't have any orange on today. I'm a TCU Horn Frog, so I wear <laughs> purple almost every day. So I'm not really in the right town, but there are faithful frogs in Austin as well. Oh. But most of them are in Fort Worth. So Okay. Um, and how, have you always been in Austin? Are you, I've were been you in just Austin drawn to since, it? Uh, since around 1992, I've been in Austin. But I've lived basically all up and down. I-35 between Dallas-Fort Worth and in San Antonio. I mean, the you were talking about Terry Kaler. We started the Reed Lockhart Golf Company in San Antonio. So we started down there, and it, it, and it kind of grew from there. I've given, you know, going back to Terry just a little bit, I've given him a little, a little you know, elbowing that, you know, that new Hogan blade looks pretty similar to our old Reed Lockhart. But it was a great iron as well. So, you know, why not? Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you look at all the sandwiches today, they're still replicas of the old original Wilson staffs. They all are. Because what, yeah, what are you going to do to, yeah, what are you going to do to improve a sandwich? You want, the, you want it to look pleasing to all the players and just really mess with, you know, everybody's kind of messed with the bounce and the sole on all the wedges now. Um, so what makes, uh, Austin golf, because when I've uh, talked to various people and listeners and saying, hey, I, I'm thinking of going down to Texas to play golf. Which city should I go to? Everyone's like, oh, you got to check out Austin. Why? What is it about Austin golf that's so special? I think it's the consistency and temperatures. So, you know, our golf courses year round are going to be in top notch shape. Uh, you know, we pride ourselves here at Wolf Dancer to uh, be in tournament quality shape day in and day out, meaning that. You know, I feel like we could home, host a, you know, high level amateur event, a tour event every day. And that's what I really charge our, our golfing staff, uh, our Pete, Peter Clark, our superintendent, and all his guys to really work hard to make sure every day is quality turf, quality playing conditions. And you'll find that at any of the golf courses in Austin, you know, our temperatures are just, just like it is right now. You know, we really don't have a winter down here. So we get a lot of people from from up north come down because yeah. they just can't play right now. So I think that's really the optimum time is almost year-round for golf in Austin. And of course, the Austin nightlife is something you want to experience as well. If you get down into Austin, there's so many great music venues. Right. Uh, that was part of the uh, the reason for coming down is we want right. to check out the nightlife on a, on a Saturday Absolutely. night. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah it's, so yeah. it's great here. Yeah. So, so please come visit. Love it. I, I'm coming soon. I am very excited about this, and I, I, I'm advising all all listeners to uh, yeah, check it out. Yeah, you'll be here some next week. Can't wait to see you next week. Next week. Let's yeah. hope the weather holds up. Huh? I don't it will. Come it, down and have. It's it's supposed oh, to hold up. You'll be good. Okay. Okay. I so, promise. So, uh, uh, how did you end up becoming a golf instructor? Um, going back, I wish I could still find that piece of paper I had, but you remember, you know, in second, third grade where you filled out, what that do you piece, want to do when you grow what up? What do you want to be when you grow up? And really? I, and I wanted to be a golf pro, but not necessarily the ones that play on tour. I mean, I thought that was a, that's a great life. And for those who do that, hats off to them. But I always liked, and it comes back, it speaks to, you know, who I learned from my grandfather and my father, they both uh, were ministers. And to me, you know, being a golf pro is also, you're basically a minister as well. So I always liked the idea of not only that interaction and point of pride 
and the people you meet playing golf that I thought, you know, teaching that interaction, because there's no greater joy than working with somebody who's struggling and handing it all over the place and just give them a few little tips. That's my homage to Mr. Pinnock and just seeing their face when it goes straight. And there's nothing better than that. So from early on, I wanted to be that teaching professional, that golf professional that works with the membership and, you know, creates a good atmosphere for golf because it is a game and we need, and we all need this game to go out and escape the day to day and everything that's going on. We're all looking for that escape. Four I'm to five so hours, curious so. to know if uh, your father, your grandfather, when you said, yeah, golf instruction is kind of like being a minister. I see it that way. That's what I want to do. They, uh, <laughs> what were their reaction to well, that? Well, I, I didn't really have that interaction with my grandfather, but see, uh, when I, when I went to TCU and I went into, and I started in seminary because I was looking at, you know, becoming a minister because at that okay. time following in the family business. Well, right. But I really enjoyed golf. I love playing golf. And, you know, I really started peaking right after college about finally figuring out my game, you know, you know, in the early twenties, I finally peaked. I wasn't, you know, I was okay. Middle of the road, Early on, that you know, and we're speaking of the day when we all have persimmon in our golf bags. So, <laughs> so, and you know, so my dad, who's very philosophical, and he thought ideally the best job for me was being a small town to where I could be the golf pro during the week and preach on Sundays. <laughs> okay. Now, was your dad a golfer as well? Yeah, he was. Uh, but so that's but, how you got started playing. Right. And my grandfather, my grandfather was a pretty good player and he was a uh, high school and college friend of Harvey Pinnock. So oh, that's, that's wow. kind of my early connection to Harvey Pinnock. My, my grandfather graduated from the university of Texas and he was Harvey and Harvey Pinnock's family's minister. He was at Hyde Park Christian church in Austin. So wow. that was pretty neat. So I got the opportunity to take a few lessons from Mr. Pinnock and very quiet, very unassuming and just not you know, like we see today, I, I just still love his style of teaching. And Jim Hopkins, who's going to be our director here and one of the founders of the Harvard Pinnock Academy early on, you know, Harvey always thought, and I've been in total agreement of that, that within all of us, Fred, is a golf swing. You just got to have that instructor help you find it. You know, I'm not going to swing like Tiger ever, you know, anybody. Yep. So putting me up against Tiger, I mean, maybe if you put me up against Craig Stadler, I got a chance. I'm, I'm kidding, but, <laughs> but, you know, but, you know, we've all got our own way of doing it and, and mm -hmm. trying to put us into a method. I don't think that works. It may work for some, but not for everybody. I think we've all, you know, we're long wasted. We're short wasted. Our strengths in our hands and our arms are in our legs. So we've all got a different way of applying the club into the ball. And I just think, have an instructor like Mr. Pinnock was, like Jim is for our Harvey Pinnock Academy, and like I like to do it, is to help you find the best swing for you. Oh, good for you. Hey, that's thanks. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, no, that, is. that is great because, you know, we've had so many conversations with instructors who want to get you into their, their hitting bay and put you on video right. and then compare you to Tiger and say, look at what you're not doing. It's like, I can't. I'm right. not built that way. Yeah. I don't have that flexibility. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm in my fifties. He, you know, and he's right. old for his thirties. But you know, I but don't I think do it, that. It, to you me. know, it is there. There are good uh, ways to look at that as well. I think it's kind of neat to break down somebody's swing like Tiger. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I'm not ever going to get in those positions. But it's good to see what. I mean, you can just see visually how much Tiger's swing has changed. His spine angle has been all over the place yeah. through the years, and. uh and I hate to see what has happened to him, and we'll get we'll get back to Wolf Dancer, but um, you know he made a lot of putts and made a lot of shots that, as we know, if you play golf long enough, the golf gods don't let you have those forever. You know, so you know, just look at all the. Uh, uh, you're still, becoming a preacher. Oh, uh, hang on. I, I am. I'm sorry. <laughs> but you know, you you look at the 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 close up of that putt on 18 at Tory, and look how many yeah. bounces it took. Yeah. And you just see it halfway there, and you go, "There's no way that's going in." Right. And then it but stopped. Yeah. And hung on the lip. 
I for how long? I for long enough see. to Nike to, to cash in another check. It's, you know, he's had so many of those great runs, but, yeah. you know, it, which happens for all of us sooner or later. You don't want to say the luck runs out, but. Wow. So you're not saying, yeah, his head's messed up. He's trying too many things. He should go back to. You're just saying golf gods are getting back. They're, well, getting, they're balancing have, out the everything. The, you know, there's the mental side to all of that. And, and of course, you know, I, I like how the, you know, Tiger got in and broke down his swing. But I really think, and we've seen that happen to a lot of different guys that, that play out there that if you get rid of the natural swing and break it down to the segments, it's not going to, it's not going to work in the long run. And I think that's where he is. He needs to get back to the, and of course he's had the injuries too as well. So I think that's been a challenge for him, but of course, you know, once uh, a lot of those guys break down the swing as much as they do, it becomes a problem after a while. Yeah. Yeah. And then you got those Uh, amazing guys like Bub out there. I don't know how he does any of that. Yeah. Or DJ. Right, right, DJ and then too. We can hit the ball a mile, but you're not sure about his head. And then, of course, you have the whole thing with Jordan last year. Right. Can he do that again? Right, and he's already everyone that he can. Yeah, I mean, yeah. people have locked him in, going, "Okay, this is the way it's going to be for years with this kid." Really, really? Let's talk about those golf gods again. Can it right. happen again? Could well, Lightning right strike? now, the, yeah, the the hole is just huge for him right now. Yeah, right. I mean, it just looks like every hole is a vacuum and sucking his putts right in there. So that's a confidence thing, right? I it mean, is. It, it, it is. It, you know more than most, as we, right. you know, anyone who's ever held a golf club, that when you're confident, your game completely changes. Right. I mean, it's amazing how your vision broadens. I mean, I know when I'm playing well, just like I said about Jordan, the cup looks really big. I feel yeah. like I, I'm not going to miss anything. And then you get a little run of where, ooh, I had a little doubt in there, a couple of three butts, the whole shrinks. It gets smaller and, and smaller, smaller. And then you and feel sm- like yeah. you can't. Yeah. It's, and it'll just feed into your whole game. It'll get into I've, your long I've game, had those, too. Right. And I've had those moments where I'll be setting up my putt, I'll be looking at the line, and I'll actually see a line on the green that's not right. there, but I see it. And it's like, yeah, I got this one. Done. Yeah, Easy. Yeah. That's you know, I wish rare. somebody, I wish somebody would write as well. And it's, I think it speaks more to a little bit of that book, the Zen, the Zen of golf is how many times have you Zen golf, Dr. Or, Joseph Parent, right, or someone in your group, and it's been like a 20, 30 footer, but halfway there you go, it's going in. I mean, ha- yeah. and it does. I mean, that that's the phenomena of our game that just is just crazy to me. But you can hit one that feels good. It's got a chance. And then everybody, it's going in, and it does. Yeah. When you just, I can't tell you how many times I've I've had situations where, I like I made the putt, someone made the putt, and everyone's going, it's going in, it's going in, it's going in. Oh, and it's well, then there's yeah that far but, to the left, right? But see how I approach that is they all went in. Well, if you talk about <laughs> Zen golf, you talk about Doctor Joseph Parent of Zen golf. He says you made the putt, it you just didn't hole it, right? So. That's the way that one looks. Yeah. So who is your hero growing up? Uh, did you have golf heroes growing up and, and playing golf? I think, gotcha. yeah, I had quite a few. I, you know, um, of course, Mr. Hogan, who I worked for um, in the late 80s and early 90s, I really had great respect for his game. Um, Byron Nelson as well. I had the opportunity to meet Mr. Nelson many times. Mm-hmm. Um, just all oh, no. those great players uh you know the the coolest thing i think and this was later on the the first round of uh colonial i think it was 82 i think it was right around 82 i was just finishing up college and i went to first round of colonial and whenever i go to any of those tour events i always like to find the unknowns see what they're working on see what they're doing so i found this group and this was so cool when you think about today but then they were nobodies it was bobby clampett Hmm. Gary Hallberg and some wild child named Fred Couples. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just me and some other guy, which I found out later was Fred's future wife, his first wife. We're just following those guys. And, you know, I'd heard about Hallberg because he was the heir apparent to, you know, Jack Nicholas from Ohio State. And Bobby Clampett had such a great amateur career. And then this swashbuckling guy with long hair. 
And his golf bag, I still remember his golf bag. He had a old Freddie had a Wilson staff bag, Hogan irons, and a three wood. That was it. Persimmon three wood. Wow. That's all I had. Cause wow. he, yeah. And you know, that loose flowing swing, which is still there. His hair is just great out like all of us, but it was the most amazing thing to see all those three guys, rookies on the tour and play. And that's when I really became a part of Freddie's crew because, you know, he'd just throw his ball up on the tee, roll it around a little bit and just, not even use a tee at all. He'd just kick up some, you know, just get a little turf up. And he'd hit that three wood past both those guys. Wow. It was incredible. Just free flowing That's, everything, you know, yeah, and Hallberg so and Clampett were just so precision down the middle on the green, all of that. And Freddie hit this big old kind of a slice and just did it every time. And so I was really enamored with those guys too. That was really cool. Very cool. Thank you. I You're appreciate welcome. it. That's a great sure. story. Yeah. I want to get, I want to talk a little bit about Wolf Dancer, the, sure. the golf course that you're uh, currently uh, working at and running. Um, I, I found an article from Golf Advisors saying top 25 U.S. courses for pace of play on right. Golf Advisor in 2015. And they did this, and it was, uh, I, I'm look, looking here at, at this uh, right. article. I printed it out. It says 121,000 plus reviews written by golfers on Golf Advisor in 2015, and the single greatest complaint is in a mediocre to poor review is slow pace of play. Right. Um, and then it talks about the top 25 courses, and they're at number nine. Congratulations! <laughs> it says Wolf Dancer Golf Club, uh, and here's what people were saying about it: very good time, pace of play, excellent. Finished in little over three and a half hours. That's pretty impressive. It is. And would you like to comment on that, sir? We're not open <laughs> at dark either. So, <laughs> well, I think, uh, yeah. Do I, you agree with that statement? Well, <laughs> I know I was going to be challenged with this because with our rating from the back tees, we're the fourth hardest golf course in the state it's pretty challenging and our footprint is very large. So when we get big groups here, it's pretty challenging to get, uh, you know, group play, even with a scramble under five hours, but really the offset to what where the ranking is, I, I believe is the time of year you play like right now, all our native grass, which is really in between all the holes is mowed down. So you can oh, get good. in there, you can find the ball, you can, you can advance it pretty easily spring and summer that stuff's going to grow up and it's beautiful, but it's three feet high, visually mm. intimidating, hard yes. to play out of hard to find. So right now our pace of play is great because the time of year, um, and just everything's so firm. And if you come out here at twilight, you know, in the afternoons, you can play in three, three and a half pretty easily. Uh, most of our members tee off in the morning and most of our regulars are right around in the morning. So if you've got the opportunity to come out of here after one o'clock, after two o'clock, yeah, I can guarantee you probably 90% of the time it'll be three, three and a half. And the other That's thing that fabulous. helps us with that is we've got the Visage GPS system. So, uh, okay. You know, you is start, it a walk, is it a walking course or do you have to ride? Well, you don't have to ride. Uh, we can encourage that, but, but I'm seeing, which is nice to see more and more walkers because the proximity of the first tee is, is kind of far from the clubhouse. So we do offer okay. rides to the first tee, but we mm -hmm. maintain cut throughs through the native from every green to the next tee. And we do a lot of high school and college events where they walk. So it is, yeah. it is doable. It's very doable, but uh, now I forgot where we were going. Well, we're talking about pace of play and walking uh, yes. versus oh, riding. Oh, and the, right, and the and the GPS system as well. So with right. with the GPS, if you haven't played here before, the first few holes, there's some blind shots, and it's pretty challenging. Oh, okay. So, you know, the GPS, you can hit the flyover. You can kind of see where it wants you to go. And it also helps us monitor from the golf shop where you are and pace of play so you're ever mindful of that. But we also, because we're in the – that technology, but I really like the face to face. We've also got, they're called marshals at other places. We call them course ambassadors here. So they'll touch base with the golfers two or three times during the round. Do you need a water? Did you run out of golf balls? 
you know, anything like that. Do you need, and just kind of let them know where they are on pace. Mm -hmm. So there's things mm -hmm. like that that we do. But, you know, typically our afternoons, yeah, I think three, three and a half is very doable. Wow. That's great. Now, for I, I mean, all the listeners, Saturday yes. morning when I got 120 people out here, it's not going to be three and a half hours. Yeah. I that wish it was. But, uh, especially on the weekend. So right. when you talk about having a large footprint, does that mean you don't have like a, a hole goes in one direction and then the next hole comes back in the other direction, then the next hole goes in the next direction, and then just back and forth and back and forth? Is it well, there's a, little a, bit long, of that. a long distance between each tee, you know, from green to tee box? There's a what little is, bit of all that. There's some of that, but when we get into spring and summer, when all the trees have grown back out and the native is up and it's really neat, Except for two or three holes, on most holes, all you see is that hole. Okay. I mean, that's, that's really it. nice. So I it's like that, that good tunnel vision. I like having courses that kind of give me that tunnel vision so that yeah. it's framed more. I hit more fairways that way. When I get on a wide that's open golf course, I actually hit it everywhere because I don't know where to aim it. I mean, so that helps me personally. But the footprint is just large um, just because of the – it's, it's just a large piece, piece of property. And so I just, the routing is very nice. You start out along a wooded ridge line, you work through in some prairie. We've got some uh, holes that, you know, can take you back to St. Andrews. Just a lot of rolling this to a lot of bunkering, mm. very old school. And there's just so much diversity in the course itself that, that plays to, you know, we, the challenge we have is there's a lot of our competition courses have more than one course on their property. We just have the one at Wolf Dancer, but, and I find it myself, every time you play it, it's different. The wind's a little different. Oh, it's coming gosh. out of different directions and you, it's really a golf course that you want to play more than once because there's so many nuances and different angles that you really learn more about what Arthur Hills was trying to do when he designed it. And uh, I love it's so challenging. Like you want to, yeah, it's it's so much fun to play that I just tell people that yeah, here's some of the courses you can go play, but I really want you to play hours, two or three more times to really appreciate mm -hmm. it, and you're going to play yeah. so much better that way as well. Sure, sure. I love I love courses that when I walk off, I went okay, I want to play that again because now I get what I was supposed right. to do on that right. hole, right? Yeah. And I want to I want another crack at that. that exactly. I love golf courses like that. Yeah, because uh, even with yeah with, great. with the GPS system, then you get to visually sure. see where you want it to go until you've really yeah. done that. It's still right. right. I agree. Is there a lot of elevation change at Wolf Dancer? There's quite a bit, and I was hoping before our call today that I would have a number because somebody's asked me that before, and I don't really know the number of the elevation change, but I think I should know that. But there's quite a bit, um, and you'll find when you come in here, Next week, our drive-in, we have a three-mile drive to the property off the highway. So don't oh, get really nervous yeah. when you're at a mile and a half with your guys and go, <laughs> where are we? Yeah, okay, I'll, is, I'll warn them of that. Is this deliverance part two? What are we going to? <laughs> you know, it's, it's not going to be like that. So it is it is three miles back in here. But mm -hmm. you're going to find a lot of turns, a lot of rises and, and low spots just on the road. And basically, the whole front nine is like that. I mean, the... Wow. Uh, it's, you know, you're going to have every type of lie you've ever not practiced is going to be here. You're gonna <laughs> oh, no. But no, it's fun. No, no, no. <laughs> but it's fun, Fred. It's fun. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you have any par threes that the uh, the green is elevated so you can't see the ball land? Um, no, we don't. Good, because yeah. those always terrify me. Because what if you get the hole in one and you don't get to see it go in? I you have know, you that. get your. Yeah, have you really? That, I had that to that me is like the most yeah. anticlimactic thing you right. can possibly have is not see the ball go in when you finally get your hole in one. Right. What happened to you? 46 years of playing golf. I got my first one in 2012 and it was wow. uh, in, at White Bluff Resort, the property I was between my two times here. And, you know, hats off to me because I was playing with my boss and the owner. But one of their little signature holes there is like 165, but it's uphill. It's beautiful. I hit an eight iron. It looked online and great, but you know, we got up to the green. So I got my wedge out and my putter because I thought it went over. Sure. <laughs> and everybody else did too. And so oh, I really? couldn't it find it. And then one the of the guys ball. goes, Hey, what are you playing? Here it is in the hole. And I'm like, All right. But yeah, we never saw it. 
Yeah, I mean, it's like, yeah, uh, yeah, I, that's the whole point of a hole in one. You want everyone to see right. it go in, right? Yeah. yeah. So, oh, what? A, so, I'm so sorry that happened to you. Uh, but I Wolf finally Dancer, got my, I'm off the snide. I got my first yeah, one. Have you, how many have you gotten since then? None. Yeah, exactly. Okay. <laughs> Doesn't that be crazy? You know, people who oh, have, yeah, have 10, 12. It's, yeah. And it's like, really? How do you do that? Well, it's so funny about... because the one that I finally got was with this group of guys that I try that I'm coming to Austin with. Um, and, and, you know, everyone thought it went over the green. I'm like, no, I, I really think, you know, but part of the thing that we talk about a lot on Golf Smarter is getting fitted for clubs. You really should not buy off the rack. You shouldn't be playing your friend's club. You should really get fitted for your clubs. And right. of course, that round of golf, because the airline had just lost all my clubs. Oh, no. I'm playing oh. rented clubs. <laughs> and did you buy them afterwards? No, I did not. And did uh, you take I them should, I, Well, <laughs> no, I didn't. Let's just stay there. So Wolf Dancer, um, the yeah. Wolf Dancer golf course uh, is associated with a hotel property. So it's yeah, not be- just right. Beautiful yeah, Hyatt a- Lost Pines. Yeah, it's a Hyatt Regency property. Uh, Four hundred ninety-one rooms. It's a big footprint itself. Um, mm-hmm. Over sixty thousand square feet of meeting space. So for your group, we do a lot of convention business there. And oh, and I what I like do. about it, um, it's just the way we kind of flip the light switch for our, for our business levels. Is we'll do a lot of group. And then it'll be spring break and then all the families will be here and then we'll do a lot of group again. And then summer will be here and it's like summer camp in the summer. It's, it's an amazing place. <laughs> what does and, that mean? Well, I mean, we have a water park. Uh, we've got the river, the Colorado river, um, that comes to the back of the property. We do s'mores around the campfire. Um, we've got local, local legends that, that play guitar around the campfire as well. And it, it reminds me of, of camp growing up. I mean, just, you know, swimming and hanging out with my buddies and, and just enjoying that and then having s'mores at night and snow cones and everything else. And then we put the hat back on that. We've got some really serious business meetings going on here and then some golf with the business people and with the family. So it's, it's a great conceptual property that, that really can change the hat it needs to wear or whoever's driving in the front gate. I love and with it. all the great things going on in Austin, it sounds like a t- the type of property that you can come there for a long weekend and never leave the property. Right, and that yeah, and that's the way it's it's the way it's designed. It, we're so far back in here, we really want you to stay. And you know, we've got eight food and beverage outlets as well. The food wow. here is incredible. You can go from the very casual lunch in our uh, golf our golf grill um, as well. You know more of a golfer's fair, but we also do very nice dinners there at night as well in the spring during spring break and summer. And then we have a, our stories restaurant is fine dining. And then we have our three meal restaurant firewheel, which is open all the time. So it's, and at the pool, you can get all the, the fun food you want as well uh, while you're getting out of the lazy river. So it's, yeah, it's great. I love it. It's, it's, I come to work with a smile on my face every day because it's a great place to work. You're a lucky work. man. I am. You're a lucky man. I am. Yeah. And before I forget, speaking of lucky yes, man, it's my wife Jan's birthday today. So I wanted to wish her happy birthday as well. Happy birthday, yeah. Jan. Exactly. I'm glad you're watching. Yeah. Um, <laughs> let, okay. Let's get back to Wolf Dancer for a minute. She could be. She could be. Yeah. Um, let's, uh, well, she can watch it later and we can still say happy right. birthday. I hope you I had a great that. day, Jan. Yep. Great. Great. Let's get back to the golf course for a minute. Tell me about your favorite par three. I would, oh, I'm torn and I'm, and I'm torn, you know, when we talk about favorite holes out here, cause there's so many really good ones. Um, probably number 12. Uh, it's called Why? top of the top of the world. And when you go on our website, you can see it. Um, it plays a maximum of about 170. on average. We'll play it probably 120. But it sits, it's right on the top of the ridge line. So when you sit up there, it's the highest part of the property. Mm. And and right past the green, you can see the concept of the property being a settler's village. I mean, you just oh. get and you can see for miles up there. And it's also, excuse me, for 
uh, many people looking to get married. We do a lot of weddings on that tea box. I mean, that's how beautiful it is up there. It's very tranquil. It's right up in the sky. Um, and it's just, a, and it's an amazing little par three. And it's diabolical because if you don't hit the green, it's gone. It's kind of like the wooded really? version of sawgrass. Oof. 17 of sawgrass. So you got, you'll see next week. <laughs> okay. You'll find out next week. But tell it's, me about it's your beautiful. Favorite. Yeah, well, it it's sounds beautiful. the course yeah. sounds beautiful. Uh, tell me about your favorite par four. Number fifteen. Yeah, it mm. plays tips out, tips out about three twenty at the most. But you play through large pecan trees, so it's a great risk reward hole. <laughs> um, the green is a push up green, so you know you can take driver at it. But you know the most of the success I've had there is just hitting a four iron and a wedge because the green is so pushed up. It's really small. It's really hard to get a wedge very close to it, but it's just, you know, in this day, especially on tour when they're all about the bombers and making the holes longer, I, you don't have to do that. You know, playing at Riviera this week, I love, you know, number 10 there and the challenges they have. And that hole is very short. Yeah. And so I, I like to see, a lot more quality holes that don't have to be, you know, with the U S open when, when they're playing a par four, that's five twenty. I'm just like, Oh yeah. You know, courses, the, courses have gotten way too long for the average golfer. It's not right. fair that they're spending all that money for uh, one event every 30 years. If at best, you know, right. it, just, it, it yeah. doesn't make sense to me. And it's plus, a game. They're, they're playing into these guys' hands as far as, if you're making it longer, that's what they do. They hit longer. Right. But right. how's their short game? Let's test them there, like you do yeah. to us. Right. Right. And that's exactly. what, you know, everybody was so nervous. And I love how Marion held up in the open. I mean, that mm -hmm. was great. Yeah. It was good to see that. Borderline, mm -hmm. some of it, because it got so firm. But I loved seeing a shorter course being used for a major. And it held up well. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. yeah. Tell me about your favorite par five. That's got to be number three. It's called mm -hmm. All of Texas. It's, uh, it's <laughs> about yeah, Well, it's uh, the tee box is perched up in the trees, so it's about 620 from back there. But in the spring and summer, it's downwind, so it's not too bad. But when you – it's typical to uh, – you know, we talked about number 12, the par three, top of the world. When you stand back there, you can see for, for miles. You can see for miles away. Um, and it's also when I alluded to earlier, um, a few holes that remind you of, uh, you know, probably playing turn of the century with old Tom Morris. I mean, this, this hole, even though it's really lengthy, there's not a tree on it and, but there's 15 bunkers. So there are all these dune like bunkers that you see. And, uh, it's just a very different golf hole than truly the rest of the property. So I just like that, you know, we have so many memorable holes. And it's it's a lot of fun to play, but you really got to navigate your way between all those fifteen bunkers. And the cool thing, which I've not experienced any Scottish or Irish golf yet, but uh, people have told me that I've been there. So when you stand on the green and you finish, and you turn back and you look back to the tee, you don't see any of the bunkers at wow. all. That's really cool. So I love that, and it and it's really a wow hole when we'll take people up there for a site visit that are looking at visiting the golf course or bringing a group here will come right off number two which you really play in the woods and you come up to number three t and i say take a look to the right and they go oh wow because they just get to see all of that vista and the 15 bunkers you got to navigate so it's a great amazing it's a great par five yeah Let's let's get started talking about the Harvey Pennick Golf Academy, which I'd never heard about. Is this an all new golf academy? Is this a, uh, has many different locations? Tell no. give me the history of the Harvey Pennick Golf Academy. So Harvey Pennick Golf Academy was started at Golfsmith uh, when Golfsmith still was truly you know one or two stores just in the Austin area before they went uh, throughout the United States. It started over twenty years ago. Um, and Jim Hopkins, who's our director, was one of the original teachers there. And it was, uh, you know, for, for Golfsmith, it, it landed into their business that they were trying to fit people and offer lessons. And it worked very well there. In fact, uh, Jim said, you know, they had over in the life 
of, of the school there, over 25,000 people came into Austin to go to that school based on, you know, just their knowledge of reading the little red book Harvey, Harvey Pinnock put out. And he's got four now, but, you know, just his legend, you know, of working with Ben Crenshaw and Tom Kite, who are both UT, University of Texas players. And, and, and I tribute, uh, you know, Mr. Pinnock's teaching style as well to look how different a Crenshaw and a Kite are as golfers. But he knew exactly how to work with both of those gentlemen to make them the best players they could be. And so. And is that the guiding philosophy of the school? It really is. Is I mean, we. Every every golfer is unique. Right. And we're. And like I I mentioned before, you know, we all are trying to help you find the golf swing that you have within you and, and work with that the best you can. So it's. It's, it's non-invasive. There's no pressure to it at all because, you know, we want you to enjoy the game of golf. So, you know, the, the Academy's been around for that long. And when Golfsmith was purchased uh, by another golf company out of Canada, they felt like the Academy either, you know, I don't know exactly what happened, but the, the Academy had, has, had run its course at Golfsmith, didn't really feel like they wanted to continue that. So... It, it kind of went away, but Jim Hopkins realizing that there was still a need for this academy, you know, there's still some loyalty there to Mr. Pinnock and the foundation of what his teaching principles were and just the following of his book. He, he asked uh, his son Tinsley, would it be okay if I carry on the Pinnock Academy? And he found another location in Austin and did it there for a while, but really felt like and he was successful there, but he really felt like he needed a property that also had a hotel because a lot of the people that were coming in were flying in and didn't live, mm. live in our region, Dallas, Fort Worth, Houston. He still gets a few of those, but most everyone that was coming to the school was flying, you know, like this time of year, getting out of the cold somewhere else, you know, from the from uh, West Coast, East Coast, really North. And that's why we're coming. We have one guy who he, he kind of guides us in our foursome because uh, he comes from Chicago and he's yeah. had he, he goes crazy not getting to play golf over the entire winter. And so sure. each year, that's it, why we're doing it. It's got to yeah. go. So, yeah. so Jim approached me, just came in my office. I've known him a while, just came in my office. And, and he and I uh, have always got along very well. I mean, we're very low key individuals and he just politely asked have we ever had an academy here i said no it's it's been rather frustrating for us a wolf dancer because we've been approached by different kind of academies uh different individuals and you know different high profile uh, academy people and it just never felt right but my connection through my grandfather to mr pinnock what he meant to the austin area what he means to the game of golf and our relationship with jim i just said this feels right Let's do it. That's great. And That's so, great. and so we are, and and uh, and I'm thrilled about it. So, to the uninformed, uh, which I have to admit, I'm one of them. I've heard of P- Harvey Pennick. I, I know that there's a what is it, the Little Red Book, Harvey Pennick's right. Little Red Book. Right. I'm yep. trying That's to remember off the top of my head. Mm-hmm. Right. So, uh, and was Harvey a tour player? Was he just a great instructor? Who was he, and where did this all come from? Do you know well, much of that? I know a little bit just to be dangerous. I, I know okay. he was he was a it's very good he was a very good golfer early on. Uh, he was the original, and this is really neat for Austin Golf Austin Country Club, which was founded in the 1890s. Um, they've only had three golf pros. Harvey Pinnock wow. was the first one. His son Tinsley was the second one, and my good friend Dale Morgan is the current head golf professional at Austin Country Club. Which, How long has Dale been there? Oh, I think 20 years now. Wow. Amazing. So Austin Country Club is in the minds of everyone, especially here, but on tour because we have the Dell Match Play event next month at Austin Country Club. So there's going to be a lot of exposure about Harvey because that was his club. And so mm-hmm. there'll be a lot of talk about that. And the timing is great for us to unveil the Harvey Pennock Golf Academy here because it'll be spoken to and spoken about as they play the matches at Austin Country Club. It's, it's the last week in March. It'll end on Easter Sunday. 
So we got a scoop here on Golf Smarter. We got well, a head start before right. anything, huh? Yeah, we do. So awesome. I'm anxious to see Thank how the you. players do at Austin Country Club because it's it's an it's a Pete Dye design. It's really neat. Oh, wow. it, it plays uh, the front nine. They're going to switch nines, so they play uh, down by the river. It's beautiful down there, and then up into the hills. And and you know Pete, Pete can make something as challenging as you want it to be. So I think it's going to be a lot of fun to watch how those guys navigate in their matches around the golf course. But yeah, Harvey so, was the original golf professional at that club. And this is the, now, will this be the only uh, Harvey Pennock Golf Academy in operation? This, right. This is it. This is the wow, one. Wow. Okay. Now, you know, you just put a little light bulb in my head. Wow. If it takes off, great. We might look at doing it at, uh, you know, for within Hyatt, for within Golf Hyatt, there are three other sister properties. The well, Hyatt Hill Country. That's a great place to start. Yeah. In San Antonio is a sister property of ours. Park Aviara, which has the the key the Kia LPGA event uh, every year, is one of our and where uh, are they? sister properties in San Diego. Okay. And then uh, so Hyatt, Hyatt only has four golf courses associated that are, that are managed by Hyatt. Oh, now, I see. Okay. Now, when you you know, for any of our hotel guests, they can truly play a golf course associated with a Hyatt hotel worldwide, there's about 35, but they're not managed by Hyatt, but the guests don't know that. And it doesn't matter yeah. to them no, at all. The so, you know, when, when a guest pulls up golf Hyatt, they'll actually see over 30 opportunities to play golf at different places around the world while staying at a Hyatt. So, so, um, let's just say I'm coming down for the weekend. I'd like to get some instruction. I want to do a weekend course, but I also want to, you know, a weekend of, of instruction. Sure. Uh, uh, but I also would like to get some golf in as well. Right. Give me my and itinerary we, and for we, that weekend. And we encourage that. Uh, you know, awesome. we can do it all a la carte, uh, or, you know, do whatever you want to start with. You know, we, we really like to examine what you're struggling with, what you want to work on. So predominantly every morning is, uh, you know, we're working on what you want to work on, you know, do some film for you. And then in the afternoon, because, you know, you don't want to do instruction all day long. You know, the, the mind can only take so much. So Especially every afternoon, golf. right. So in the afternoon, we set you free. You can go play as much as you want or just go play a little bit and practice whatever you want to do. It's it, like I said, it's, 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 it's no challenge. We, you know, we want you to enjoy it. Um, so yeah, yeah. So we'll do a little instruction in the morning, have a little lunch and then let you go do what you like. We'll go work on it. That's what we'd like you to do. And what is the basic philosophy of the Harvey Pennant golf Academy at Hyatt Lone, Lone Pine, Lost Pines, Lost, Lost Pines. Pines. We Lost want Pines, you to get sorry. lost in the pines. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so the really the, the philosophy which we've touched on many times is that uh, truly Harvey's philosophy is that you know we're we're all you know if you if you've got any kind of athletic ability you should be able to be a pretty good golfer. Uh, everybody's got pretty good hand eye coordination. If you've done other sports that helps, but we can you know truly just working with you, we can help anybody's game. Uh, you know we're. And it depends on how serious or how you just want to, you know, not embarrass yourself with your family or your friends. I mean, it's, it's as much as you want to get out of it. I mean, and that's what we love about the game of golf, too. It is so honest. You know, if you haven't been playing or practicing, sadly, you're going to know the results you're going to get. So he's, his philosophy is great that, you know, just help you find the way to be the best golfer you can be. And that's all we want. And you have all the modern conveniences of electronics and video and we do uh, flight monitors, everything that that Harvey never had, um, but probably knew instinctively. Uh, right. But you I have mean, all the tools for you. Yeah, he really, and especially later in his life when his vision was wasn't very good, and he couldn't see. You know, ball flight's very important. So for everybody, and but he got to where he couldn't see it. But he went by sound. I mean, how amazing is that? He went by wow. how solid it was. And, and, that's, and that's how he taught his later years. I mean, just by how solid it sounded. 
Well, also, uh, at that time, there probably weren't what we call forgiving golf clubs uh, where you can... Or golf you balls really, either. Or yeah, golf that, balls, that was, right? You really had to hit it pure. Right. Yeah, and it probably sounded completely different when you did get a chance to hit it pure. Oh, sure. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, Amazing. and and that's a tribute to, you know, the Hogan's, the Nelson's, and the Sneed's at that time to shoot the scores they did with the equipment they had. It's incredible. Mm. You know, I, I can Amazing. remember, you know, the the older golf balls that would go out around in three holes. Wow. I mean, and, you know, and now most golf balls are just, you can go two or three rounds with them. Oh I mean, yeah, if you can if you can hang on to it for right. that long. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> out here you might not. I mean, uh oh, our course All right, eats I'll bring golf more balls, balls. And I was so okay. I I wasn't planning since it's the first round of my weekend. I wasn't planning to bring that many balls, but I will. Yeah, it sounds like I'm getting a little. I got a little feedback on the last line, but it's gone now. Okay. All right. Well, I, you know, I, I, I'm very excited about coming to Austin, Texas and, and uh, meeting you and getting a chance to work with you. Um, and I look forward to uh, getting to see Wolf Dancer and having a great pace of play. Well, not with my foursome, but um, Absolutely, I'm really excited Fred. about it. So, Kelly, thank you so much. Kelly O'Donnell, the director of golf for Wolf Dancer Golf Club in Austin, Texas. I really appreciate you coming on to the Golf Smarter Podcast, and I'm looking forward to meeting you. Thanks, Fred. We'll see you next week.